art a mighty God. We serve. What a mighty God. We do serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. What a mighty God. We serve. Ever constant God, what a mighty God. We serve Almighty God, what a mighty God. We serve, hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. What a mighty God. We serve. Wherever you are right now, Let's begin to magnify the name of the Lord, the only one who is the almighty God, the ever constant God, the ever faithful God, the only one who lives forever, the mighty in power, our captain, our Lord, our Messiah and Desire, our coming King. Let's go ahead and bless him. Remember all that he's been doing in our lives. Bless him for salvation. Bless him for healings. Bless him for all the deliverance that he has wrought in our lives. Let's magnify the name of the Lord. The one who had been there before any other thing. The one who will be there when there be nothing again. The Almighty God Himself, Mighty One, Glorious One, the only one who walked on water without sinking, the only one who died and rose again. Death had no power over His life. Glorify Him right now. Magnify Him for your life. Glorify Him for all that He represents in your life. Just give Him praise for His faithful. For his loving kindness, for his mercy that is working on your behalf. Bless him, bless him. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We magnify your name because you are just extremely wonderful. Our glorious God, our faithful God, our loving God, our able God, Father of all fathers the captain of all the captains, the only one who is above all. Thank you. We bless your name. We say thank you for your goodness. We say thank you for your loving kindness. We say thank you for your support. We say thank you. Take all glory. Take all honor. Take all adoration. For in Jesus, my fellow's name, we pray. Amen. Now, let's bless the name of the Lord on behalf of our parents, our daddy and mommy Adeboe. Go ahead and bless the name of the Lord for preservation, for journey mercies, for his grace upon the lives of these, our parents. Bless the Lord for how the almighty God has been making himself available in the affairs of their lives. Bless the name of the Lord for supporting them and the ministry that the Almighty God has committed to their hands. Bless him. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Thank you on behalf of our parents. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the enablement. We thank you for your backings. We thank you for your supply. We all want to say thank you, Lord, because of the way you've made yourself available in the affairs of their lives. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And commit today to God's end that in the prayer reign of today, the Lord God himself will revert the irreversible. The name of the Lord will be glorified. The power of the Lord will be manifested. Go ahead and begin to commit today to God's end that Almighty God will take preeminent. He will touch our life. He will magnify his name in our lives. By his special grace, any of all that is down there be lifting today, bless the name of the Lord because of what he's going to do. Because by his special grace today, he's going to reverse the irreversible to the glory of his name. 
Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Daddy, we are highly encouraged because whenever we come before you and we cry unto you, we receive the answer. We want to say thank you for making yourself available in the affairs of our life all the time. Take all glory. Take all honor. Take all adoration. We bless you for your goodness. We bless you for your faithfulness. We bless you for your kindness. We bless you for your support. We bless you for your backings. We just want to say thank you very much. Take all glory. Testimonies abound of your goodness of our life, of your grace of our lives. Thank you, Daddy. Today, we know who God, because you are alive forevermore, and you are the Lord God of progress. That which had never been done before, let it be done in our life today. Let your name be glorified. Let your power be manifested. At the end of everything today, Baba, let it be said that truly the Lord has met with us. Thank you, Daddy, for having answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Wherever you are, shout another resounding hallelujah. We want to bless the name of the Lord for what the Lord is using our parents to do in praying for us on this particular prayering platform. The testimonies we receive every day, they are the testaments of answers to prayers. So we really want to appreciate our parents for creating a, a platform like this where we can go and contact the Almighty God. In fact, this platform, people are now referring to God here as Olorun Lesekese. In other words, God who performs his wonders immediately. The Lord God has been surprising us, and his grace is great in our midst because of who he is. So we want to thank the Lord on behalf of our parents for their prayers. I want to let our parents know again that their prayers are being answered. To God be the glory. Today, we want to focus attention on the message titled, Reversing the Irreversible. And in John chapter 11, verse 41 to 44 will be our anchor test. John 11, 41 to 44. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people we stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and filled with great clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. The complete story of this Lazarus that is narrated here covers from verse 1 to verse 46. Right there, we're going to discover the classical example of how God sometimes ago reversed the irreversible. The case concerning Lazarus here happened to be a case that only God can reverse. Ever before the arrival of Jesus, we know that he had died, I'm referring to Lazarus, and had been buried for four days. In fact, when Jesus Christ arrived, the uh, sister told Jesus, 
is thinking already. And the Lord now directed them or commanded them or gave them the order to roll away the stone. They began to wonder what exactly is going to happen today. But then Jesus lifted up his eyes and blessed his father in heaven. And thereafter, he made a pronouncement that I strongly believe it shook everyone who were there that day. I mean, all the people who were there that day. And suddenly, when they heard that voice, Lazarus, comfort. And the one that had been buried for four days came out. In fact, it was true that it is just Lazarus. It was not a ghost or someone else. The cloth they used to tie him was still there. That's why Jesus Christ told him, then, right there, loose him and let him go. Ah, I'm trusting the Almighty God today. The same God who reversed the irreversible in that village called Veta by bringing Lazarus out of grave who had been buried for four days, the same God, will visit your home today, will visit your life today, will visit your family today, will visit your business today, will visit your career today, will visit your academics today, we speak with everything concerning your life today. And whatever has been negatively concluded as irreversible, this same Jesus will reverse. And the name of the Lord be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, reversing the irreversible requires certain deep transforming dimensions. Where discover series of things that took place that day. If after this message, go and study the entire episode. That is John chapter 11, verse 1 to verse 46. You are going to discover there are series of things that came to play before the irreversible could be reversed. The first thing that came to play there is the dimension of relationship. The dimension of relationship. Right there we'll discover the first secret. Why the Lord Jesus Christ could add to revert the irreversible is that the relationship, the family of Lazarus Heart with the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. Look at verse 2, for example, of that John chapter 11. John 11, verse 2. The Bible says, It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her ear, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Can you see the level of love? The level of worship, the level of the way Mary had embraced the personality of Jesus, that he brought the alabaster box. Oh, very, very costly. And then pour everything right there on the feet of the master. And this is using napkin or whatever. She made use of her ear to kill everything. Oh, my God. That was a relationship. And by the time they were sending message to Jesus concerning Lazarus when he was sick, the brother, the parent, I mean, the family sent message to Jesus. Listen to how they described the relationship between Lazarus and Jesus. Verse 3 of that John chapter 11, I quote, Therefore his sister sent unto him, that is unto Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. The one you love is sick. You can see what is already on ground, the relationship. Let us ask ourselves a question. 
What is your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? What is your relationship with the heavenly? What is the relationship between you and your maker? Can God refer to you as his friend? Can you say, I'm a friend of Jesus? Let us see another thing concerning this relationship before we, we ask you to pray. In verse 4, I mean verse 5 rather, in verse 5, look at how the picture is clearly painted there. I read, that is John chapter 11, verse 5. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Every member of that family, we are right there in the heart of Jesus. No one is le was left out of his love. He loved each and every one of them. That one now galvanized. That one now brought about. That one now made it to happen that the Lord God could come and have irreversible reversed. By the time you are, look at how close they are to you, one would think this can, come, can bring about content. Looking down on Jesus, no, not the family of Martha and Lazarus and Mary. The respect they had for Jesus was second to none. Because in John chapter 11, verse 28 to 29, John 11, verse 28 to 29, you remember Martha came first to make Jesus cry when he heard that Jesus was around. And then she quickly went to call Mary and listen to how they described Jesus. I quote, John eleven twenty eight, And when she had so said, she went to her, that means to Mary, and called Mary, her sister secretly, saying, the master is here. They still refer to Jesus as the master. It was true. He will come to their house and eat. It was true. He will come to their house and play with them. And they sat down right there at his feet and they began to listen to the word of life. It was true. But that one didn't remove the reality of the personality of Jesus. Many a day, they have missed their miracle. They have missed their signs and wonders because of that particular way. How they look on the man of God with the highs of relationship. Is he not so and so? It's not so and so. That is the problem they had in Bethlehem. When Jesus entered into his, his own village and he could not perform mighty miracles there because the Bible says, for their unbelief, he's not the son of the carpenter. We know his mother. We know his father. Ah! Mary could not be afflicted with such a particular virus. Virus of looking down because of relationship. Not at all. I want you to pray right now. Lord Jesus, by your grace, by your power, by your hands of love, draw me closer to yourself. And give me that grace to fear you. Ah, the Bible says, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the law. The fear of the law is the beginning of wisdom. Never, never allow my life to mess up by looking down on you, Lord. The great to obey you. The great to take you as my master. Sit down, yes. Stand up, yes. Do this, yes. Do that, yes. Give me that grace, oh God. Pray with all your heart with that prayer. Lord God, let your hand of love draw me closer to yourself. Pray that prayer. That the Lord will draw you closer to himself. You'll be right there in the heart of the Almighty. And the Almighty God will be in your heart. You will love him more dearly. And you will cherish him. You will obey him. You will honor him. All the days of your life. Not the matter of people. 
who are taking grace for granted. They are better type grace. Oh, I got the grace of God. And they were doing things that we are now him. They have not taken Jesus as their master. But whenever we want the irreversible to be reversed, Jesus must be honored. Jesus must be cherished. Even as we love him with all our hearts. Pray that prayer. That is the first thing we discover, the dimension we discover in the family of Mary, Martha, and Jacob, I mean, and Lazarus. They embrace him, they love him, and at the same time, they know he's their master. They dare not mess up. They dare not do anything that will grieve him. He's their master. To God be the glory. I pray with you today, and I pray for you this hour, that the hands of Lord and Lord Jesus Christ will bring you closer to himself. And by his grace, you will not mess up. By his grace, you will not disobey him. By his grace, you will honor him with all your heart. And then, irreversible in your life, will be experiencing the divine intervention and they will be reversed by the special grace of God. Thank you, Father, for having answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Let's quickly go to dimension number two that could bring irreversible reversed. When you get to verse 35 of that John chapter 11, you discover how Jesus wept. We have been told that is the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Just two words. Jesus wept. Wept. And that is the dimension of divine compassion. Ah! Wherever the compassion of the Almighty God is demonstrated, the irreversible will be reversed. No matter how tough, no matter how hard, no matter the situation, no matter the mountain, how solid the mountain, and how long it has been there. No matter how conclusive certain matters are being, anywhere they are defy compassion. Ah! You have suddenly you are going to discover the irreversible will be reversed. Right from the time ever before we were born, the Lord God demonstrated his compassion concerning this world. And in John chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, John chapter 3, 16 to 17, the Bible says, For God so loved the world. If we are permitted to bring that word in another way, it could be quoted as saying, And God had compassion in the world. And what did he do? Irreversible was reversed. God became man. And he gave his only begotten son. Irreversible, God reversed there because of God's compassion for you and for me. And right there, God became man because of his passion. Ah, because of his compassion passion of our lives. I don't know now what are the problems you are passing through. All that you need to do right on, all that you need right now is the compassion of the Almighty God to be demonstrated in your life. And that will settle the matter. That will bring irreversible reversed by the special grace of God. And by the time you get to Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians 2, verse 12 to 17. Ephesians 2, 12 to 17. You discover how we are totally a stranger, how we were far away from the, from the law, how we were not children of covenant, how the promises of the Lord were not meant for us. But with his compassion, when God became man, all the things we have gathered together, brought together, and we cannot enjoy his grace, his faithful. Your prayer is this, very simple. 
and the, but very potent, very powerful, is, Lord, have compassion on me. Are you right there on the sick bed? The compassion of the Almighty God will take you out of that sick bed. You are right there on the wheelchair. The compassion of the Almighty God will take you out of that wheelchair. You can listen to me, but you are blind. You cannot see physically. The compassion of the Almighty God that was demonstrated in the life of Bartimaeus the blind will open your eyes. You are barren. The compassion of the Almighty God will open your womb and your life is upside down. You cannot even get the bearing of your life any longer. The compassion of the Almighty God will give you a new life, a new life. And the red light of your life will turn green again in the mighty name of Jesus. If you can cry unto him, Lord, have compassion on me. Cry to him right now. Say, Lord, have compassion on me. That was the secret of Bartimaeus the blind. That was the secret of the ten lepers. That was that point to be the secret of those people who have got their irreversible reversed. Ah, God is waiting right now to demonstrate his compassion upon your life. The Bible says it's because of the compassion that we are not consumed. Ah, pray right now. Oh God, have compassion on me. Have compassion on me. Have compassion on me. Have compassion on me. He wept there. He got there and he wept. Imagine how deep rooted was that compassion that day. Ah, oh God, he could not bear it again. He could not continue like that again. He had to call out Lazarus. It was through. His case had been sealed up negatively. They haven't put that stone there. Lazarus, come forth. That's what the Lord said because of the compassion that they have for that family. Pray right now. Lord, have compassion on my family. Have compassion on my life. Have compassion on my marriage. Have compassion on my business. Have compassion on our nation. Oh God, have compassion on us. On our nation, daddy, have compassion. If the compassion of the Almighty God demonstrated, crisis in our nations will disappear suddenly. Because when he moves the compassion, he will reverse it, irreversible. And this is what the Almighty God is about to do right now. Pray, Almighty God, have compassion on us in our nation. Have compassion on us in our marital life. Have compassion on our education. Have compassion on our commerce. Have compassion on our industry. Have compassion on our economy. Have compassion on us, oh God. And that we reverse the irreversible. Thank you, Daddy, for having answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And I join my faith with your faith that the compassion of the Almighty God will be demonstrated in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let God hear your amen louder. Amen and amen. Let's go to another dimension of reversing the irreversible. Number three is the dimension of environmental sanitization. You remember when he got there, now he wept. But then, certain aspect of thing had to be done. The running away of the stone. And the environment must be created for the matter of in reversing, I mean, reversing the reversible that it was about to take place. And that matter is this. Environments must be conducive. For this miracle. Why? The miracle will take place definitely. No doubt about it. Lazarus will be given life. He will definitely resurrect from where he's been buried for four days. But by the time he's coming out and he meets the stone there being rolled, the miracle will not be manifested. The miracle will not appear. Nobody will see the miracle in the real sense of it. Whereas it has taken place. Many, many a day because of the environment that is not going to condition. Even when the Almighty God has performed that miracle, they have not, they've not 
experienced it because the environment is not conducive. Check your life. Check your environment. What is that particular thing that will not allow the miracles of God to manifest? We have been told by our Father and the Lord that the devil is, that this year is the year of wonders, that the Almighty God will do marvelous and wonderful this year. At the same time, a conducive environment must be created for the Almighty God to perform his wonders and his wonder to manifest. That is the reason why also, when Jesus was to come out of the grave, you remember? That Almighty God had to send the angel to roll away the stone because when he's coming out, stones do not hinder him. And in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, Jeremiah 4, 3 to 4, the Almighty God advises us here. The Almighty God gives us the directives here of how to create a conducive environment for signs and wonders and miracles. I quote, For thus here the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, and is speaking to us also, break up your fallow ground, and so not among tongues. Break up your fallow ground. Never, never continue again to sow a mountains. Circumcise yourself to the Lord and take away the first skin of your heart. There are so many environmental pollutions that have affected your heart. So that when God is speaking right now, your heart has been had it. God says, break the valor ground. Let every first skin of your heart be circumcised. Don't allow what you have observed, what you have experienced, what you have taken notice of, the way the things, the way people are there with your life. No, no. Don't allow it to ruin and to hinder the blessing of God upon your life. Forget about that. Focus your attention on God. Break the fallow ground. Osea was not left out. He also warned his people in his own time. In Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Hosea 10, 12. So to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon us. He said, other people may damn their hands in unrighteousness. He said, no, 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 no. Never, never do that. Don't because of the situation and your environment pollution. Whatever is going on, allow your hand to be sore into No, 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 don't do that. Stand with me. Stand for me. I mean, go there and let the people know you stand for me. He said, it is time to see the Lord. And definitely, let me assure you and take this word from the Lord today. They are going to be the reign of righteousness very soon. Therefore, stick. Take your stand. Never, never allow yourself to sow anything in the field of unrighteousness. Stand for righteousness. Suddenly you are going to discover very, very soon the name of the Lord be glorified in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So therefore, roll away the stone. Maybe I will give you a minute or two to command the free stone that we not allow the miracle to manifest. That we not allow the miracle to appear. That we not allow the miracle to surface. Command that particular stone. Be rolled away now. What is that stone? Unbelief in your heart could be the stone. Bitterness against somebody could be the stone. Ah, how you have been panebited and you never believe again that the law can do you good. Maybe the stone. Roll it, away, roll it away. A miracle is about to take place. It's already taking place right now. And God is speaking to you right now. Roll ye away the stone. Roll ye away the stone. Pray right now. Every stone of unbelief. Every stone of bitterness. Every stone that will not allow my miracle to appear. In the name of Jesus. Be rolled away. Be rolled away. Be rolled away. Pray that prayer right now. Right now. Right now. Right now, right now, whatever has been right there in your heart, 
that are not the word, and not allow the word of the Lord to penetrate to your heart and God, roll ye away on answered prayers that are giving you a, 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 a kind of worriness and sorrow. And then you, if God answered prayer, why has he not answered my prayer? And then you are tired now of praying. Roll ye away. Your prayer will soon be answered. The Lord God is on the throne. The reign of righteousness is about to fall. The name of the Lord is about to be glorified. Roll ye away the stone. And the Lord God himself will answer you. Thank you, Father God. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Father, we thank you because by your grace, stones have been rolled away. Because the miracle is about to appear to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's go to another dimension that brings about reversing the irreversible. It's the dimension of gratitude. Acknowledging the past miracles that Almighty God had performed. Ah! After the master had wept, compassion had taken place, he knew that time the miracle is about to happen. They told them, row ye away the stone, and they've done that. One thing more that the Lord knew that we trigger the irreversible, uh, uh, reversing the reversible. And what is that thing? Gratitude. That's why he looked up and he said, Father, I thank you. I want to appeal to you. Whenever you are facing with matters that you cannot handle, the matter that the medically speaking, they have told you no so, so to say. They have told you no way out. They are told you, medically speaking, we don't have solution. When you fail with a matter in your marital life, I say, you have hit the rock. When you get to a particular point in your career life, ah, you have now diagnosed as it were. When it appears, the economy of your nation has penetrated everything concerning your life and everything that collapsed. What you have to do that time, remember the fig trees. That Almighty God has wrought in your life in the past. Remember the grace that Almighty God has released into your life in the past. Remember the testimonies that Almighty God has given to you in the past. Remember how you were down in the past and the Almighty God has lifted you up. Remember the situation of your life that you could not handle. And but the Almighty God came here and he helped you out. And begin to thank the Lord for that. Begin to thank the Lord for that. That was the instrument David used in that first Samuel 17. When he was fed to fail with Goliath, you remember? He just told, simply told the people, Ah, I remember. I was right there in the bush. A lion came and tried to attack me. I tear the lion to pieces. And the bear also came. I tear the bear to pieces. Then the, the Lord God, who rescued me from all these Deadly animals, so to say. Goliath, you are the next one. And we also have testimony over you. Goliath, you are going to be one of them. And God will be saying, say, yeah, that is me. Yeah, that is me. Yeah, that is me. And that is how Goliath lost his life and his head and life. Because somebody made use of the weapon of gratitude. I want you to stand wherever you are. Begin to thank the living God. Even while you are lying there on the seabed with stroke, begin to thank the living God. Ah, begin to thank him for all the miracles that are performed in your life in the past. If you are right there and they say there's no hope for you, begin to thank the Lord. I mean, you cannot, you can hear me. Begin to thank the Lord with your heart right now. If they told you no solution, no so, begin to thank the Lord. Bless his holy name now. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Magnify him, glorify him, honor him. Let his name be praised. Let his name be honored. Let his name be magnified. Magnify the name of the Lord, the King of glory, the Lord of lords, eternal rock of ages. I am that I am, who have been there with you all this while, all the time. 
Ah, it's the same God who had not allowed your life to be ridiculed. By his grace, you have never been disgraced in your life. This time around, you will not be disgraced. Ah, he has not abandoned you. He's still on the throne. Bless his holy name. Glorify him. Honor him. Elogize him right now. Praise him right now. Lift him up high. Lift him up right now. He's the king of glory. The Lord of lords. The eternal rock of ages. I am that I am. My beloved God. Praise him. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' marvelous name we pray. Amen and amen. That's the reason why Psalm 67, verse 5 to 7. Psalm 67, verse 2 to 7. Say, let the people pray thee, O God. <laughs> let all the people pray thee. Say, then shall the hell yield and increase. Whenever we praise him, certain things that had not been there before we struggle. And we begin to see the glory of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Finally, let's see the final thing that triggers or brings about reversing the irreversible is the dimension of declaration. The dimension of declaration. After everything has been gathered together, flares have been come, all kind of things have been done we can see the love of the family radiating the heart of Jesus. We can see the master Jesus Christ with a compassion being displayed. We can see the obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ brought ye away the stone. We can see Jesus Christ now thanking his father. Oh God, everything is now in place. Irreversible was about to be revived. But... Something more, something more, something more, something more. What is that thing? Declaration. That is what Christ Jesus did when he said, Lazarus, comfort. He made that declaration. And that is when Lazarus could come out. Brethren, you can gather everything together. Obeying God, doing everything if we see close our mouth, we may not have irreversible reverse. That's the reason why the Bible, Jesus Christ says, man, always to pray. Always to pray. Ah, Pete, I mean, Saul, the apostle said, pray always. Pray always. Jesus even added, not only that we should pray, we say, without faith. Every time, irreversible will be reversed. God will decide to listen to the people that is going to do this thing for. Bartholomew the brand cried. And when he got, he got to where Jesus Christ was, Jesus still asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He made the declaration that when he had his miracles. Lazarus, comfort. And that's the reason why the Bible told us in Job 22. The Bible refused to us in Job 22, verse 28 to 29. Job chapter 22, verse 28 to 29. Thou shalt also decree a thing as I be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. And when men are cast down, listen to this. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, mark that word. When men are cast down, you cannot just close your mouth and say, well, I know I will not be cast down. Mm -mm. He said, you say it out. You made that declaration. It is true. Men are being cast down. As for me, there be a lifting. There be a lifting declaration. Wake up in the night, declare. In the morning, declare. During the day, declare. In the afternoon, declare. In the evening, declare. When you have done all and uh, you now add declaration, you begin to add what you want. Do you know what? Sometimes we pay our tithes. We give our offering. We have done everything. We obey God thoroughly. And yet we are poor. The revelation, God refused to me this. You give all this thing, you have not made them never, 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 never made a declaration. You arise. You speak to where you are walking. Promotion is my portion this year. You speak into every aspect of life. 
Ah, I will not be down. You make a declaration. Tight, I've given you to go. I command you, all the windows of heaven, begin to open for me. That's why Job asked a question. Have you commanded your money since your day begun? Have you commanded your money since your day begun? And you tell all the four corners of the world to know their place so that they can begin to work and for you wherever they are. From today onward, declare, declare, declare. And I want you to stand wherever you are right now. Begin to declare how we live and not die. How we declare the glory of the Lord. I will not die on the witch year. Definitely, with my two legs, I will proclaim again the glory of the Lord. I declare that family will not be truncated. Definitely, my family will not scatter. I declare my children will make it in life. I declare we will serve the Lord. I declare the glory of the Lord will be manifested in my life. I made this declaration. I will not die poor. I will not die eternal. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare right now, ah, the Lord will use me mightily. The anointing of the Lord will flow in my life. This my hand will raise the dead. This my voice will raise the dead. By the special grace of God, I will be a, a, a vessel in the hands of the Lord in this life. Ah, I will not die. Or no, I will not die like this by the special grace of God. By the special grace of God, I declare right now that the glory of God will be manifested in my life. Go ahead. Make that declaration. Make it now. Make it clear. And the name of the Lord be glorified in your life. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. Honor be to your holy name. Adoration be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. That is the secret of reversing the reservable, the relationship between you and your maker. The dimension of the compassion, of the fine compassion upon your life. And not only that, we have been told you have to put everything in order that a conducive environment will be created. We refer to that to a dimension of environmental sanitization. And not only that, we have, been, we have discovered today gratitude played a fighter key in reversing the irreversible. And not only that, you must make declaration. Let God hear you clearly. To God be the glory for our, what the Lord has done today in our lives. We want to thank the Almighty God. Yes, Lord. And uh, by His grace, Today, all that the Lord has imparted in our life has started around now to experience manifestation. We would love to hear from you. Please, are you here on this platform? You've not surrendered your life to Jesus? Why not now? He's the only one who has all the power to revert, then revert. You. So wherever you are, bow your head right now as we want to pray for you. Father, we thank you. For all those that are watching right now and they are surrendering their life to you, Lord, we pray that by your special grace, everything concerning their life will be taught by you. Your blood will clean their sins away. Your, their names will be written in the book of life. And by your special grace, they will serve you to the end and you will reverse the irreversible in their life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. If you have uh, done that one, we'd love to hear from you. By the special grace of God, after the program, you will see all the contact details right there on the screen. Um, we'd like to hear from you, and we get in touch with you immediately. Every one of us, lift up your hands and we pray. Daddy, you have met our needs today in a deeper dimension. One thing I'm asking, that every one of these your children, whatever been tagged irreversible in their life, let me revert today. In the name of Jesus, and let the name of the Lord be manifested. Let your power, O God, be manifested. And by your special grace, after we have put all what you have taught us today, together we begin to see our life with a new life in the realm of the Spirit, to the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Somebody shout, Arisani, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.